watched it now. King, Cawdor, Glamis, all as these weird women promised, and, and yet I fear thou playest most foully for it. And it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth in them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine. Why, by the verities when they make good, may they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in hope. But hush, no more. Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it has been as a gap in our great feast, <coughs> and all things unbecoming. Tonight, we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I require your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to which my duties are the most indissoluble ties. Forever knit. Ride you this afternoon. Aye, my lord. Is it far you ride? As far, my lord, as we fill up the time twixt this and supper. Go not my horse the better, I must become a borrower of the night, for dark hour or twain. We here our cousins are bestowed. In England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parasite and filling their ears with strange invention, but of that tomorrow. Hi, you horse, adieu, till you return again. Go, go splay us with you. I, my lord, our time does call upon us. <laughs> I wish your horse is swift and sure of foot, and so commend you to your back. Let every man be a master of his time till seven at night. To keep society the sweeter welcome, we'll keep ourselves alone till then. God be with you. <laughs> Sirrah, a word with you. Attend those men our pleasure. They are, my lord, without the palace gate. Bring them before me. To be thus is nothing but to be safely thus. Our fears and banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which should be feared. His much he dares, and he hath the wisdom that doth guide his power to act in safety. There's none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked, as it said Mark Antony's once by Caesar. He chid the weird sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, then bade them speak to him, then prophet like they held him father to a line of kings. If it be so, they placed a barren scepter in my grip, and a fruitless crown upon my head, thence to be wenched by an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for them I filed my mind, for them the gracious Duncan have I murdered, to make them kings, the seed of Banquo kings. <coughs> Rather than so, come fate <coughs> into the list and champion me to the utterance. Who's there? Get thee gone. Was it not yesterday when first we spoke? It was, so please, your highness. And have you considered my speeches? <clears throat> know that it was Banquo who in times past held you so under fortune that you had thought it been our innocent self. You made it known to us. <laughs> and do you find you can let this go? Are you so gospel to pray for that good man? And for his issue, when with heavy hands he hath beggared yours, and commended you to the grave forever. We are men, my liege. Aye. In the catalog ye go for men as hounds, greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, water rugs, sows, and demi wolves, all are cleft by the name of dog. The valued file distinguishes the swift, the slow, the subtle, the housekeepers and the hunters, each according to that gift which bounteous nature hath in him contained. Whereby he doth receive particular addition from the bill that writes them all alike, and so of men. If you have stationed in the file of manhood, and not the worst rank, say it. I will put that business into your bosom, whose execution takes our enemy off, and grapples you to the heart and love of us, who wear our health but sickly in his life, but in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, and the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless in what I do 
fight the world. And I and others so weary with disasters and tugged with fortune that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid on it. Most of you know Banquo is your enemy. True, my, my lord. lord. So is he mine in such bloody distance that the minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life, and though I could, with bare face power sweep him from my sights, yet I must not. For certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not lose, would wail the fall who I myself struck down. Thence it is that I, to your assistance, do make love, masking the business from the common eye for such sundry, weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you have commanded us, though our lives Your do... spirits shine through you! It must be done tonight, and from the palace I require a clearness, and with him, to leave no rubs nor botches in this work, Fleance, his son, who keeps him company, his absence is no less material to me. He must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart, I'll come to you anon. We are resolved, my lord. I'll call upon you straight. Abide with them. Banquo. Thy soul's fight. If it finds heaven, must find out tonight. Hello, my lord. Why do you keep alone? Of our sorriest fancies your companions making. Using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them live on. Things without remedy should be without regard. We have but scotched the snake, not killed it. We cannot eat nor sleep. Afflicting dreams do shake us nightly. Come on, my gentle lord. Sleep o'er your rugged looks. Better be with the dead whom we, to gain our peace, have sent to peace, than have the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps while treason hath done his worst. Not steel, not poison, malice domestic, foreign levy, nothing can touch him further. You must leave this. A full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest Banquo and his play on slip. And in them nature's copy is not to eterned. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. Be thou joking. Ere the black bat hath flown his cloister fight, ere to black hecate summon the shard-born beetle, with drowsy hums hath young the night's drawning pearl. There shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What is to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest child. Put thou upon the deed. Come, get with me. Come! Sealing night and scarf up that pitiful eye of watchful day. And with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to rocky wood. Good things of day begin to droop, and drowse whilst night's black agents their plays do rouse.
You know your degrees. Sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks, 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 our self will mingle with society and play the humble host. We'll require your welcome. Pronounce it to me, sir. For all our friends, for my heart speaks. They are welcome. See, they encounter thee with their hearts' thanks. Both sides are even here. I'll sit in the midst. Be large in mirth and not. We'll drink a measure that table round. There's blood on my face. Is Banquo's then? This better he without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. Thou art the best of the cutthroats, yet. <laughs> He's good, <laughs> still likes for plants. If thou didst, thou art the non perial My good lord, plants escape. Thence comes my fit again. I had else been whole as marble, founded as rock, as broad in general as the casing air, but now I'm cabin. Ribbed, confined and bounded to saucy doubts and fears. But, but Banquo is safe. Aye, my good lord, safe in a ditch he buys with twenty trench gashes on his head. That I did for him. Thanks for that. <laughs> the grown serpent stab, the worm that's but have nature in time venom bred. No see for the present. Get me gone. My poor lord, you do not give us the cheer. Sweet remembrance, sir. <laughs> How good digestion wait on appetite, and health to both. May it please your highness, sir. Here had we now our country's honored group, who the graced person of our bank well present, who I may rather Challenge for unkindness, then pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Place your highness to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What Which is it that of you, you have done this? Done what, what, my lord? lord? Thou canst not say I did. Never shake thy glory locks at me! Rise, his highness is not well. <laughs> it's worthy of friends. Sit, my lord is often thus, has been so from his youth. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought, he will again be well. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? I, in a bold one which looks upon what might appall the devil. Proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Rosna starts, imposters the true fear. Would well become a woman's story at a winter's fire, unauthorized by her grandam. Should they see there? Look low! Behold! What Carrie would say? What <laughs> thou cannot speak to. Can Charnel Graves and House send back the ones we bear? Stand here, I saw him. Shame. Blood hath been shed ere now. In the oldest time, ere she made statue purge that dead to wheel I. And since two murders hath been performed too terrible for the ear. The time had been that when brains were out, men were dead, and that were an end. But now, they rise again with twenty mortal murderers on their crowns and push us from our schools. That is more strange than such a murder. My noble lord, your friends do lack you. I do forget. Muse not at me, my most worthy friends. I have a, a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me well. Come. Love and health to all, then I'll sit down. Ah, give me some wine, fill full, and I'll drink to the general joy of the table. And to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss, would he were here. To all and to him we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and the pledge. Avant! And quit my sight, and they are behind thee! Thy bones are marrowless, thy flesh is cold, there's no speck. 
saturation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Think of this, good peers, as but a thing of custom. Tis no other, only spoils the pleasure of the time. But man dare, I dare, take any shape but that, and my firm nerve should never tremble, or <coughs> be thou alive again, and dare me to the desert with thine sword. Unreal shadow, horrible mockery, hence! <laughs> what? Being gone, I am man again. I pray you all, sit still. You <laughs> have displaced the list. Broke the good meaning with most admired disorder. You make me strange, even to that disposition I owe, and now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks where mine are blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? Oh, speak not, worthy friends. My lord grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. What at once? Good night. Stand up upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night. And better health attend his majesty. A kind good night to all. <laughs> it will have blood, they say. Blood, they will have blood. What's the night? Oh, course, at odds with the morning. Which is which? Tomorrow, at, and betimes I will to the weird sisters, for now. I'm bent to know by the worst means the worst. For mine own good, all other causes give way. I am steeped so far in blood that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as to go o'er. Strange things I have in head, which must to hand, which must be acted ere they could be scanned. You lack the seasons of all natures. Sleep. <laughs> Come. Well to see. This strange and self abuse is that initiate fear which wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. <laughs>